there, I'm Joanne Hogan, and this is Upfront. I wanted to take the time to share with you today something very special about what the Vancouver Island Crisis Society offers. Uh, I, I'm going to be upfront about this and let you know that I am an employee of the Vancouver Island Crisis Society, and I'm here with my two of my co-workers today, uh, Lindsay Wells, who is the Community Education Program Coordinator, and Emily Post, the Community Awareness Coordinator for the Vancouver Island Crisis Society. So today we're going to be addressing uh, a rather serious subject, the subject of suicide bereavement and the support services that we offer at the Vancouver Island Crisis Society. So welcome to you both. We're going to begin uh, talking with Lindsay, and Lindsay Wells is uh, has been offering suicide bereavement support services in the past with the Grand Vancouver Island Crisis Society. And uh, she's going to share with us some of the history of what has transpired with that. Uh, I know it all began with a walk that you presented a while ago. Yes, Joanne, uh, it all began in 2005 with a walk that uh, a group of us on staff and volunteers at the Crisis Society decided to do uh, because we'd been very, very um, just inspired by a walk that myself and our executive director, Elizabeth Newcomb, took in Ottawa uh, in, in sort of reference and reverence to suicide bereavement. And on that walk, we each uh, carried a pair of shoes that had been donated in the name of somebody who had been lost to suicide. And it was so moving. We did that in Ottawa one year that we decided to bring it back to Nanaimo. And so a group of staff and volunteers got together and created what has become to be known as Souls Remembering Souls, which is a walk around the harbor front. Again, it began in 2005. And out of that, we had many people expressing an interest in wanting to find some kind of suicide bereavement support services locally because there was just nothing of that nature being offered, particularly in Nanaimo. And now we know that there, there is, are not a lot of these sorts of supports island-wide. And so we began with a suicide bereavement support group where we heard overwhelmingly from the people that they were looking for a place where they could come and talk about their loss in a, in a way that would be comfortable and non-judgmental because right across the board, most of them shared with us that in their own day-to-day -day lives, they just weren't accessing or getting that kind of support from friends and family. In fact, because of the stigma around suicide, many of them were feeling like friends and family were backing away from them. And I know for anybody bereaved by suicide, that feeling of include me, even when I'm sad, even when I'm grieving is so important. And that's how the group came to be. Uh, we ran it for, uh, I want to say, about seven years and uh, monthly. And then uh, it was passed over to some of our wonderful hospice people in 2013, I want to say. And, uh, and, and then they took it over. And now it's kind of come full circle. We all work together. But the Crisis Society has not only... Um, reimagined our suicide bereavement support group but we've also come to the realization that more is still needed and mm. so that's what brings us to today and uh, you know what I'm very excited that Emily is going to talk about. Okay and uh, just so you know we'll have some pictures that are going to be displayed of former uh, World Souls Remembering Souls events which are held on uh, on or near September 10th, which is World Suicide Prevention Day. And uh, this has been uh, promoted on an international level just to increase the conversation about suicide loss and suicide awareness and prevention as well. So that, as you mentioned, to, to take away from the stigma of talking about suicide. So that has certainly helped in our community and in many other communities throughout uh, Vancouver Island and elsewhere to create more discussion about this. And I know that as well throughout these different World Suicide Prevention Day events, you had presented some workshops for, uh, for those who 
specifically had lost someone to suicide. And uh, so there, we've certainly shown at the Vancouver Island Crisis Society uh, you and uh, people like Heather Owen, a lot of dedication to helping create conversation and as well to afford that deep listening to those who have lost someone to suicide, which is often described uh, in academic writings as a complicated grief. And uh, Emily, today you're going to tell us about what is happening now that since September, uh, the Crisis Society is now offering suicide bereavement support services once again uh, to the communities of Vancouver Island. Thank you, Joanne. Yes, we are. So I'm very grateful to be here and be sharing about our, our new suicide bereavement support services. So as Lindsay mentioned, we have offered suicide bereavement support services in the past in ways of community education and a suicide bereavement group. And now this year, we have revitalized our suicide bereavement support services, and it is now a two-tiered approach to bereavement support. So through careful consideration with academic literature, as you mentioned, Joanne, we understand that a longer term support system is beneficial to those bereaved by suicide and individualized support is needed as well. So in response to this, our two-tiered service offers one-on-one -on -one individualized support calls and it also offers a monthly bereavement support group to individuals bereaved by suicide. So what that looks like is the one-on-one -on -one individual support calls can be done to anyone on Vancouver Island, and that can be done over the phone, over Zoom, or if they're local, it can be done socially distanced in person as well. And that is at the request of the individual, so as, on an as-needed basis with the one-on-one -on -one support. And then our monthly bereavement support group meets once a month, the first Wednesday of every month. And that is a, an open group. So it is a confidential and anonymous group that is done by invite only, but it is open in the way that it is ongoing for those who are bereaved by suicide to meet with one another and with myself, Lindsay and Heather Owen as facilitators of the group to share and connect and connect with others that are also bereaved by suicide loss. Okay, so uh, how many meetings have you had so far in terms of the Zoom uh, group meetings? We've had three meetings mm -hmm. and we have had a very positive response to the meetings so far. They have grown month by month and being able to offer this island wide as you know, as a service is an incredible opportunity because previously, historically, being locally based and in person, it did kind of exclude those who were located elsewhere on the island. And now that we can do it, we are open to anyone all across Vancouver Island. And so with the one on one, that's on the, there's no particular timeline, as you said, it's uh, as long as it takes. Uh, you you meet with those persons uh, at a, on a at appointed times that you di discuss together. Absolutely. So that can be done for consecutive weeks, or maybe you know one one in a month, one the next month. It's on an as needed basis. So the individual can reach out to a facilitator and request that. And again, mm -hmm. it's personalized, and they're also free of charge, of course. So all of these services are are free to the public who are needing that suicide bereavement support. Okay, and um, just wanted to mention, although this will take place, uh, this piece will be broadcast after uh, November 21, which is this year has been uh, chosen as the date for um, uh, International Survivors of Suicide Loss Day, uh, where there have been workshops and gatherings uh, throughout uh, Canada and the world uh, on that particular day. Uh, and we have, as I recall, offered workshops around that time as well in the past. Uh, so there's, again, a chance for people to connect in other ways uh, on that day with other groups if they choose to. And uh, I think that's just wonderful to, again, open the conversation up for those who uh, are, are feeling that this is the time and place for them to uh, reach out. And uh, getting back to uh, Lindsay, I just wanted to check with you like um, in, in terms of the workshops that are offered 
by the Vancouver Island Crisis Society as the uh, Pro Community Education Program Director. Can you tell us a bit more about programs such as the ASSIST workshop and other workshops you've presented? I'd love to tell you more about those programs, Joanne, because they're so instrumental in uh, not only preventing suicide, but giving people the skill set to know what to do if they suspect somebody might be thinking about suicide. So we have so uh, some of the programs that Vancouver Island Crisis Society delivers are the ASSIST program, first of all, Applied Suicide Intervention skills training, those continue to be ongoing. And uh, those are done in person, so we are doing smaller socially distanced groups. We also offer crisis intervention skills training, which is a fantastic two-day nonviolent uh, communication skills course that is offered both in person and via uh, online on Zoom. And then I'm really proud and happy to say that uh, all of our three-hour workshops that were developed either for World Suicide, Suicide Prevention Day, Crisis Line Awareness Week, or uh, Out of Demand from Community, all of those three-hour workshops are available both in person and online, which is really exciting because as Emily talked about, strangely enough, uh, during COVID-19, we have been given an opportunity to take a look at technology in a way that enables us to bring these programs to people all over Vancouver Island. And that doesn't only include our adult programs, but we also have some wonderful suicide prevention and mental wellness programs for youth that people can check out on our website. And uh, that brings also uh, the idea of uh, what is covered about suicide prevention and awareness in the school programs. So I thought, Emily, maybe you could address what, how that works in the programs that have all been developed by the Vancouver Island Crisis Society for schools and for learners. Thank you, Joanne. Absolutely. So all of our school programs do touch on mental well-being, mental health, and the ones that are geared towards the older students do acknowledge suicide as well. So our goal with our youth education programs are to increase confidence in the individual to be able to cope themselves with any mental health struggles, but then also to be able to reach out to others if they are struggling with their mental health, which could lead to thoughts of suicide. And again, with our programs that are geared towards older youth, we also encourage students to be peer gatekeepers and look for signs in their peers that might be suggesting that their peers are struggling with thoughts of suicide. So we actually have three school programs. One is called COPE, which is Communication, Options, Perspective, and Enjoy Life, which we have recently revitalized and we spoke about recently um, as a virtual program that's really geared towards all ages. And that is around the principles of mindfulness and the ability to cope with your own mental health struggles. And then there is GRASP, which is Growth, Resilience, Acknowledgement, Suicide Awareness, and Personal Planning, which is a... a high school program, grade eight to 12, that is that peer gatekeeping program to recognize struggles in your peers. And then we have Speak Out, Reach Out, Help Out, which is a 45 minute sort of TED Talk style assembly where we go into schools and we really talk about suicide awareness for yourself and then in others as well, how to get help and how to talk about suicide. So those are the services that we have begun to offer over the last two years with the Crisis Society. However, due to COVID-19, we have adapted and, and kind of morphed our services. So COPE is the first program that we made entirely virtual. So that really can be used for all ages to talk about mental health struggles and the importance of reaching out. And then GRASP and Speak Out, Reach Out, Help Out. GRASP, we are in the process of making virtual as well. And Speak Out, Reach Out, Help Out will resume when we are able to go into schools again. Because of the sensitive nature of discussing suicide, thoughts of suicide, and that subject matter in general, we prefer to be there in person with the assurance that supports are available for students who mm -hmm. may struggle with that subject matter or may feel triggered or need additional support afterwards. So that's 
uh, service that we, we need to do in person. So when we are able to, we will absolutely continue to provide that to students. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like it's very comprehensive and very supportive to all age groups uh, throughout uh, the communities. And in terms of the suicide bereavement support services, there, is there a particular age group that this would be geared to, uh, Emily? We are geared towards 18 plus because of the nature of the group. If we do believe that those that are 18 plus are in a space to be able to benefit the most from that support support setting. Mm -hmm. However, if somebody, if a family is affected, we can speak to what services might be beneficial to children or others affected, and we will do everything we can to provide other additional connections to services or uh, external supports that might be mm -hmm. useful, or we will uh, utilize the supports available within the crisis society to help those individuals as well. All right. So there's a welcoming feeling for people to reach out in, in how you folks speak about this, that uh, you're there to support, you're there to listen, and uh, we're going to show uh, the contact information for people who need to find suicide bereavement support services in uh, their community, uh, online I should say, and uh, that is by calling us or by emailing us and uh, the, there is an initial, Lizzie, there is an initial meeting or discussion, isn't there, when someone contacts us? Yes, how yes. it looks is once we make contact, uh, it begins with a phone call where uh, we j just to get to know the, the individual and to really give them a chance to get to know us and mm -hmm. then to be able to make a great mutual decision for both parties mm -hmm. uh, as to whether or not the group is going to be a fit or if there might be other options that could be a fit because there are there are other options and, a, and an open group like this doesn't necessarily mean it's for everyone mm -hmm. but we know from from uh, from the research that uh, suicide bereavement support groups that are uh, very um, facilitated but really ownership is given to the group to move that in the direction it needs to we know uh, from research that the earlier a person who can get connected to a group like this to support services like these the, the better their chances of having a less complicated grieving process that mm -hmm. you know and, and and perhaps they can find their we call it their their new normal, you know, in two years instead of in five. or mm -hmm. and, and so that gives us a lot of hope. And, and again, it's such a safe space, both the, the individual sessions and the group, for people to be able to talk about things that might not feel as comfortable to talk about with other friends and family members, with people who may have questions, so we give them that space to be able to, to be able to share. And what Emily and I and Heather Owen, our, our other facilitator, are there to do truly is to witness their process, to, to witness their pain, to listen and to be there to support them through it. We're not that we, we can't take away the pain. We often say we're, we're, we're there to hold up the umbrella because we can't stop the rain. Mm -hmm. But we can certainly be there with that umbrella, and that's and that's what we do. And it's been very, very heartening over the years to see how helpful this service has been for many, many, many people who were feeling incredibly isolated, lost, and alone. And I can bear witness to the fact that as a person who often was involved with many others in the organization of Souls Remembering Souls events, that a number of participants in the suicide bereavement support group from the past would attend and uh, felt that they were in a place where they could share what they had gone through. And, uh, and, and some of them actually became supports for other persons as well. So it was very heartening as well to, uh, to participate in these events and see how uh, conversation could bring safety and, and the, the, the strength to, to reach out to people. And so in closing, I just wanted to mention to both of you that uh, 
we're going to, again, present the information about how to contact and uh, would also like to hear some closing commentary from both of you on how this has impacted your work in, at the Crisis Society. Uh, I often say that uh, being connected to the Suicide Bereavement Support Group has been one of the singular most helpful, eye-opening, empathy-building uh, additions to my practice that I ever could have hoped for. Uh, being able to, as I said, being able to be in the presence of people who have experienced this kind of a loss, a loss that also makes them vulnerable to thoughts of suicide themselves, a loss that's very isolating, and to see them get up and put their shoes on and take a breath and and make want to be here for another day. Uh, it's it's very moving and it's very uh, rewarding. And um, I am not, I often say, I am not grateful for the circumstances that have brought our group together. Mm -hmm. I'm not grateful for that at all. However, I am grateful for the beautiful human beings that I've had an opportunity to meet over the years and the loved ones who have been lost. Because I think Emily, Heather, and I would all agree that we don't only get to know the people in the group, but we get to know the ones who we've lost. And it's very important to us to be able to remember them, not just for the way they died, but for who they were as complete, beautiful, individual, flawed, interesting human beings. Thank you so much, Lindsay, for your wonderful words. It's beautifully said. And uh, now, Emily, I was just wondering if you could share how being part of a suicide bereavement support service uh, has impacted you. Thank you, Joanne. As you said, Lindsay summarized that beautifully and shares my sentiments absolutely. I would say that being part of this process has deeply moved me. It has impacted me personally and in my professional practice. I have learned so much from witnessing the resilience of the individuals that show up to our group and that utilize these services. I would say the strongest people that I've ever had the privilege to meet. And so it has, it has impacted me deeply and I am so grateful for the fact that the Crisis Society can offer these services. And as Lindsay mentioned, we wish that nobody would ever have to find themselves in the circumstance where they're bereaved by suicide. But for those that are, we are so proud to be able to offer services that can be there for those individuals. And as you mentioned, Joanne, suicide loss is complex. It is a complicated type of grief. And having a space where individuals can meet with one another and express that grief and have someone truly hear them and understand what they're going through, I think that's very unique. It's very special and it is absolutely needed. So my hope is that these services can continue for years to come and be there for anybody who needs services such as bereavement support for suicide loss. Yes, and uh, as someone who's been part of the the walks, I can attest to uh, how resilient these folks are despite everything that has gone on and that it is very moving to see them uh, take one step at a time, as Lindsay has mentioned, uh, you know, breathe in and breathe out, right? And uh, and find uh, strength in the company of others. It's a very moving experience. And I just wanted to add as well that uh, the Vancouver Island Crisis Line can be a source of support in, in the short term. Uh, all of our uh, people trained on the line are uh, experienced in supporting people who are in grief. So again, thank you so much, Emily and Lindsay, for participating in this presentation today. We hope that it, you know, if one person out there is uh, feels empowered to reach out for the help that, you know, it's, it's anything to help that person or any others is a great uh, way to show support for our community.